All right, so let's move to The Mandalorian. We've got two episodes now. By the time this goes up, we will only have two. I got in before episode three. So I had no expectations for the show. I had not watched any trailer. I think maybe the teaser trailer, but I had not watched any trailers. Didn't, you know, watch any interviews or read any articles. So I went in pretty much blind. I honestly did it. I, going in, I thought it was a Boba Fett show. That's how little I knew about the lore going into this or anything going into this. I thought it was like a Boba Fett prequel, which I'm sure a lot of people wanted. I thought that's what we were going to get because we talked about that Boba Fett movie. I like the fact that it's not a Boba Fett movie. I think that's pretty cool. But anyway, so <laughs> that gives you my level of knowledge going into it and I'm, I'm actually extremely happy I have I had nothing going into in into this no no idea of what I was getting into I didn't even know who was in it to be quite honest all I knew was John Favreau created it that's all I knew that's it so my thoughts are it's awesome man it is my favorite new Star Wars content and this is coming from a guy who I had my issues with The Force Awakens because I just felt like some things seemed a little rushed. Obviously, it's the usual criticisms of, yeah, it felt too much like A New Hope. I thought that they kind of rushed into Ray's abilities with The Force, things like that. Minor things. I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I had a good time with that movie. I'm also a guy that even liked The Last Jedi. I know it's crazy. A lot of people hate that movie for reasons I don't understand, but I enjoyed The Last Jedi. I, I, I actually enjoyed Solo. It, people hate on Solo, and I thought that, that was a fun movie, and I enjoyed Rogue One. So at this point, if, you, <laughs> if you're listening, because I'll clip this out, if you're listening solely for the, the, the Mandalorian stuff, you might have already checked out because I might not be a credible uh, critic on this because I said I liked Solo and uh, The Last Jedi. Rogue One, that gets the street cred. People like that movie a lot. I do, too. I think it's great. That being said, all of it being said, so I'm someone that's not like, oh, you know, screw screw The Last Jedi, screw Solo. I'm not that guy. I kind of like all of it. The Mandalorian is better than all of that, and I think by a mile. That's how good I think The Mandalorian is. And I think I like The Mandalorian so much. It's, it's a similar thing to... Why I like Rogue Rogue One so much. Spoilers. I think the reason I love Rogue One. While it does patch things to another movie. While it brings in more of A New Hope. And it's attached to that directly. Especially the ending. It has a definitive end for its characters. There's not an overarching thing. It's not a saga. There's not going to be a Rogue One trilogy. You know. And the characters... Again, spoilers. All the main characters in that story die. It's over with them. It's dead. They all die. It's done. While that sounds incredibly morbid to root for that, the reason I like it is because it adds some layers to the Star Wars lore and it doesn't insist on being, oh, it's a Skywalker story or another Skywalker story or somehow they're related to someone in this this other thing. There's this deeper meaning and they're attached to the Force or anything like that. There's none of that. You don't even see a lightsaber until when Vader shows up in the end of that movie. And that's what I love so much about The Mandalorian, where it is in that world. It is in a familiar space. It still has that lore to it, but it doesn't rely on a Skywalker. It doesn't rely on the Jedi or the Sith. It doesn't rely on any of that stuff. It solely relies on the story that it's trying to tell of this one character it's a western it's it's like firefly it's a star wars version of firefly it is a 100 percent a western it's even like a video game the way that it plays out even especially the first two episodes it plays out like a video game it starts with him doing his his like first mission he completes it comes in gets his next mission goes in and does that and then the next episode it continues that trend Oh, I don't have something. Well, I need to get off this this part, this section of the game. Well, I can't get there yet until I do this like little filler quest and go do that and, and carry that for that I it still manages to work. And it still plays like a western because of the way it's shot and there's not a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of go- stuff going on with action, but the cinematography 
is done in a way that it feels like a movie. It doesn't feel like a TV show. It definitely doesn't feel like a show that's on a streaming service. And that's not, I'm not trying to take a dig at Netflix or something like that, or, or obviously Disney Plus is what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to take a dig at streaming services. I think that is still the future. But this is a TV show with a $120, <laughs> $120 million, not a $120 budget. That sounds like something I would make. It has a $120 million budget, and they use it to craft a beautifully shot story. The, what they were able to do with just visual storytelling is fantastic. And I think that harkens back to more of an old school style of Star Wars. And I'm not saying the new Star Wars movies don't have that level of scope in cinematography. But I'm saying that The Mandalorian really focuses in and hones in on what really made the original trilogy so great. Was they didn't need a ton of dialogue. They didn't need a bunch of all this silly stuff with politics and things like that to weigh it down. It simply is just saying a story. This is what happens. This is this character. This is his job. This is his, motiv- his mission. We don't necessarily know his motivations yet because we're still trying to piece it together. There's still mystery to it. If this were another Jedi story, we know exactly what the story would have been. We know what the character would have been. Oh, yeah, well, I'm a Jedi and I got to fight the Sith because the Sith are bad. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um... Before I go like further into the story of it, I will say that as much as I am in love with the Mandalorian right now after two episodes, I can honestly say I don't I still it doesn't raise or lower my excitement level for Rise of Skywalker because this is so much different than what those are. And it it still works cohesively in that world, but it manages to be its own thing. And that's why I think I love it so much. I, I got to be honest, this is the first time I think ever, other than maybe The Force Awakens, that the Star Wars fandom has united behind something. Everybody loves The Mandalorian, and rightfully so. It's awesome. It's great. And that, and I've made multiple, not why not multiple? I made one episode uh, about how I feel about the fandom of Star Wars. But uh, this this is really something special, and I really like it a lot. And I think this is the first time in a while where it's actually unified the fan base, where everybody really enjoys it. And uh, so story-wise, we don't know much about the Mandalorian. I don't even think we actually have his name. As far as I can remember, in the two episodes I watched, they don't give his actual name. He's just the Mandalorian. He's he's a Mandalorian. The Mandalorian are bounty hunters. That's what they are. Um... Yeah, he he's he's interesting. It's uh Pedro Pascal. You may know him as a uh, I think his name's Oberon. Oberon? I don't know. The dude that got his head popped by the mountain in Game of Thrones. And he also was um Oh god. Was it Whiskey? I think his name was Whiskey in uh Kingsman the Golden Circle. He was the dude with the rope. If, if that if that helps. He's the dude with if you haven't seen it, he's the dude with the he's he's the American dude with the rope. That's all you need to know from him. I think he probably has the most challenging role in this this show because he's he hasn't and I don't think they're going to make him do it. He he's got his helmet on the whole time. So, he really has to do a lot with physical motion, and even then he's pretty stoic. He's kind of just a silent badass, and I think that still works effectively for the show because again I think it plays with the idea that it's a western. I mean for Pete's sake, the first scene of the show, he shows up into a tavern and kills a bunch of dudes and the guy looks at him that he saved and he's like, "Well, thanks, I don't really have any credits or whatever." And he goes for the his blaster that he put back in his holster and he says, "I can take you in warm or I can take you in cold." That's a line from a Western dude, and by the way, badass line. It was awesome. And I, I mean, I don't want to get too specific with the story in case people haven't seen it yet, but obviously Baby Yoda is the cutest damn thing I've ever seen. And I think I got to applaud him because I don't, I, don't quote me on this, and I'm too lazy to look it up, but it looks like Nick Nolte's character in this show is not CGI. It looks like it's an animatronic. If it's that CGI, that is the best realistic CGI I've ever seen. That's incredible. But I think 
that he is an animatronic, and I think uh, Baby Yoda is for the most part. I think there's some parts that he's CG, but and I also love that it goes. It, it keeps harkening back to the original George Lucas trilogy, where it is focusing on special uh, practical effects for its special effects. And yes, there's CG in this show. There in 2019, that's insane to think that there isn't some level of CG. But the fact that it's more uh, practical, I think, is is what's really impressive, especially with a, a show like this where they have all this they have all this Disney money and they could easily make it more CG. The the practicality of it is what really attracts me to the show. Well, I actually had some other things I want to talk about, but I think I spent a lot more time than I anticipated talking about just Disney Plus and uh, The Mandalorian. I, I'm very excited for what the future to come with that show. And um, it's it's a weird thing and a cool time to, to be alive when we have something like that. And I like the time period that it takes place as well. Uh, the fact that it's set after uh, Return of the Jedi, but before Force Awakens, because we don't really have that much story in between those two movies which i think you're gonna see more of because i mean that's a 30 year gap between those two movies so i feel like there's so much lore you could pack into those those 30 years and make things work i mean you can't necessarily do a bunch of things because unfortunately you know certain people passed away in that time because it's a long time and you know you don't want to get in the whole weird uh you know uh what's the God, what's the phrase something valley Gosh, it's going to drive me nuts. When you see something that isn't... Ashley's in here looking at me weird. Uh, it's... Uh, oh, God. When you look at technology, and it's supposed to look real, but you know it's not. Hidden Valley? No. Hidden Valley's ranch. <laughs> oh, God. Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley. That's what... And then you get in the whole thing... With the whole thing uh, when it comes to likeness and paying the family's estate and then you get messy it's like you don't want to it's you know and then you're like how much time do you pass before someone you know passes away when you can you use their like it's a, it's a weird messy thing but uh, that's the thing you run into but you know you could just kind of avoid that and tell your own stories be original in that world there's so much lore that could be made in star wars and i think that's what's really enticing to people is the fact that you can just do so much in those worlds and it isn't slowing down. I mean, the uh, Jedi Fallen Order came out last week. I haven't played that yet because um, I'm broke. And, you know, that that's life. Wait for those Black Friday sales. Oh, Cyber Monday, too. You know, get all, them, get all them deals. It says a lot about our society. Where that's, like a, that's a holiday in and of itself. I made a whole episode about that last year. I'm not doing it again. Not doing it again. Not the 2019 version. Stop making people work on Thanksgiving. That's the gist of it. That's what you would get <laughs> if I kept doing that. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Um, there's some other things that I, I wanted to do, but those are just silly things that I can do whenever. Um, what did you – have you gotten Disney Plus? What do you think of it? Did you think it's – are you like me where you try to get away from it, and but then you realize, oh, man, I really just – it's 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. I should go to bed, but you know what I want to watch – the first Avengers movie, which, by the way, still holds up really well. It's great. Uh, another reason to watch uh, The Mandalorian, uh, it's, I mean, you don't really need that much knowledge going into it. You need, I don't even, no, you, you could go in with the, the least amount of knowledge of anything Star Wars and really enjoy it because it's so much its own thing. You'd get more out of it because obviously there's, you know, Easter eggs and things like that for fans. But, I mean, you could, I honestly think you could go in with no knowledge, maybe just casually seeing one of the older movies and go in and be like, oh, yeah, this is a fun show. This is cool. 